Hey guys, I hope you're all staying safe during this crisis that we're all experiencing. So today I'm going to make a really quick video about how to scrape a website, extract data, and as a bonus I'm also including how to simply store this data inside of a CSV. So let's go ahead and create a file, scraping.rb. All right. So the very first thing we want to do is require what we are going to use. So the first thing is open URI, which will allow us to access uh, any URI, any website that we want through our computer. We're also going to require Nocogiri, which will allow us to access every node on that website that we're going to scrape. And finally, we need to require CSV. So the first thing you need to know is all of the things I'm going to do are available in the documentation. OK, I'm not making it up. I'm not guessing. You just need to go through the documentation. It's really learning by heart. I've done it several times, so I know most of it. But I still don't remember everything. So I still need to go through the documentation and look for the methods that I need to use. So let's create an, a method called scraping, which will take an, a parameter, which will be the URL, right? In that case, we're just going to scrape the website Etsy, but you can just make it dynamic in the future. So we'll create a variable and we'll assign it whatever website we are opening. So we pass it the, as an argument, we pass it the parameter, the parameter, sorry and we read it. All right, so this variable here contains the website that we're going to pass to the method once we call it. The next step is to take this website and convert it into Nokogiri. All right, we want every node to be part of Nokogiri. So for example, if we p this here, scraping, just so I can show you what it looks like. Right, so let's just take the URL, pass it as an argument, and run our script. Sorry. What is happening right now? There is a lot of things. It's very, very confusing and scary, isn't it? But don't get scared because this is not what we're actually going to look at. It would be way too messy. And thanks to Ruby, we have methods that take care of this for us. So we're going to automate everything. This is the website, all right? This is the page that we passed as an argument and we see all of its HTML content. Here are all the nodes you can see. So just before I go ahead, uh, if you are still practicing with scraping, the best thing to do is that you download the, the web page that you're going to scrape so that you don't get uh, blacklisted by the website that you're actually trying to scrape because if you do something wrong for example and you run a loop and you keep doing many get requests on their server they will block you because they will think it's a robot or whatever so you can download the web page from your terminal running curl uh, and code marks you enter the url and it will download it in a file you give the file name of course so that's it for the HTML. Now we want to convert it into Nokogiri elements. So we'll create another variable. Let's call it Nokogiri doc. And this one we will assign it the Nokogiri command. This is also in the documents. I'm not making it up. And there we go. So as an argument, this takes the website, which is the variable we created before and assigned it the website that we we are scraping. So if you downloaded it, it's whatever you downloaded. Otherwise, if you run it directly, it's the URL you pass as an argument. All right, and we want an empty array in which we are going to store everything we scraped. Nice. Now let's get to the Nokogiri built-in methods. 
so what we're going to do is you need to go call the variable that we created which contains all the nodes and you're calling it the search method the search method is going to look for any nodes on the website that contain a certain class so in that case we're going to look at the website we're going to inspect it we're going to find the classes that are the parents to the elements we want we'll pass them as arguments and nokogiri is going to search for these all of them uh, these uh, classes sorry so we need to iterate through it i don't need to explain how iteration works awesome so this is where the magic happens we're going to iterate through each node based on the classes. So you go on the website, let's inspect it. And what we are going to scrape for this demo is simply the title here. So if you hover with your tools, you can see that it's inside of a listing. No, sorry, it's not this one inside of listing card info, right? This is the parent div that we're gonna get, which is more or less precise. So let's copy and paste this class. And paste it as a first argument. You can put as many arguments as you want. And we're gonna put another one because otherwise it's gonna return everything that's inside of this div, which is not what we want. So. If you keep hovering, you can see that the name is an H3 tag and there's no other H3 tag, so let's simply scrape this one. That's the tag name. And then we simply say that the element, which is the parameter that we're assigning to this each, is equal to the elements text, which is also another method from Nokogiri, which will give us the content of the node. If we don't do that, it simply returns us the entire node, which is not what we want either, because we want to store it in a CSV, and it wouldn't look nice if it says H3 and it just prints everything. So now what is happening? We got the content of each node that contains this class and is as this tag. So the next step is we want to store it in our array, right? So that's pretty straightforward. And that's pretty much it actually for the scraping part. So now we scraped it and we have everything inside of our array. So we want to be able to see it. So let's iterate through the array. So that we can print it in the terminal just to see. So find your array that each do let's do it with indexes nice and quick. Each with index to index cool. So let's put this in the terminal index plus one to make it fuller so it doesn't start at zero since it's an array and we're also going to print the element itself all right so let's try calling it with this url and see what happens so there we go you can see that we have 64 titles which are printed and these are all the titles of the elements we scraped right so that's amazing actually we just scraped our first website now what we want to do is actually be able to use this data so we want to store it first right we're going to store it in a csv file so to do so all right so now that we actually have the content that we scraped inside of an array we want to take everything from this array and store it in csv 
so that we actually have the data, right? Otherwise, it's kind of useless. It's just in the terminal and Ruby's memory. Once we start the program, it's over. So I assign the method call as result to a variable called script. And we're going to iterate through this variable and store everything inside of a CSV file. So let's create that CSV file, assign it to file path variable, and call this test.csv. And then we want to pass some CSV options to have headers. So you just simply say headers, first row, and call it zip. Comments. Cool, cool, cool. So let's run the CSV method, which is simply open the file path. We want to overwrite whatever is inside. We also want to pass in the CSV options that we declared here. So let's iterate through the CSV file once it's open. Now what we want to do is the first thing is put inside of the CSV file the names of the headers that we're going to have. So the first one is going to be title. And the second one is going to be the index. Let's put it with the index. It always looks nicer. It looks organized. And then we just iterate through the variable that we declared here. Item index and we're also going to push this inside of the CSV after we push the headers obviously so item and index and we're going to assign each one in a different row as we rate and that's actually pretty much it guys so let's try it out I might get some errors, and I don't want to make the video too long. There we go. So we run it. Now we're going to see if we actually created a file. So we can see that there is a file called test.csv. So let's try opening test.csv. And there you go. You can see that we have everything here inside of the CSV files. That's awesome, guys. We just made our first scraping method, and we signed everything inside of a CSV. So thank you so much for watching, and best of luck with your learning journey.